Your alocasia probably only ever has three leaves at a time, which you're probably finding really frustrating. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why that happens and what you can do about it. This plant is absolutely stunning and comes in many different varieties. In my collection, I have the more common Amazonica, which I bought from Ikea, the Black Velvet, which I think is absolutely gorgeous, as well as the Frydeck, Malo and Scalprum, which are new additions for me that are featured in my recent plants.com unboxing video. Let me know in the comments which alocasia you have and whether there are only three leaves. My Amazonica, which is the larger plant, has lots of large leaves, whereas my other smaller alocasias only seem to have three or four leaves at a time. If this is happening to you, then don't be too frustrated. This is perfectly normal and is actually the natural growth habit for this unusual plant. Alocasias are very nutrient hungry plants, something that I'll come back to in detail shortly, and they need lots of nutrients to push out new leaves. But juvenile alocasias aren't able to access the nutrients they need because they are too small, so whenever they push out a new leaf, they shed the oldest, smallest leaf to preserve energy for new growth. The alocasia black velvet is a dwarf variety and this unique growth pattern is most apparent on this plant. I've had my black velvet for about a year now. In fact, I bought this plant in one of my shopping trip videos at Dobby's and every time it pushes out a new leaf, the oldest one turns brown and dies back. There's no need for panic stations though because I know this is how the plant grows and nothing to do with how I'm caring for it. Every new leaf that emerges from your alocasia should be larger than the last one and this is how the plant is able to grow bigger and eventually support new leaves. You can see this happening on my alocasia fry deck with the newest leaf that is currently hardening off being the biggest on the plant and the smallest, oldest leaf is starting to die off. If this is not happening to your plant, then something is probably wrong and we'll look at the reasons for this in this video. And if your plant is losing leaves at a quicker rate than the new ones are coming, then this can indicate a problem with your plant that will need rectifying. This growth habit should stop once your plant becomes mature. So if the leaves are still dropping, like I was experiencing with my Amazonica this year, and this also suggests there was a problem with your plant. So let's have a look at why this might be happening. I mentioned nutrients earlier, and this is by far the most common cause of issues for this plant. Like I said, alocasias are super hungry for nutrients. If you don't have your alocasia on a fertilizer schedule where you're giving the plant food every couple of weeks in the growing season, then it will run out of steam and start to suffer leaf dieback. This is particularly true with larger mature plants. I was neglecting to feed my mature Amazonica for a couple of years, and every time a new leaf would start to unfurl, it would turn yellow and eventually die back. I mentioned this in one of my videos at the time, and a helpful subscriber told me to give it more fertilizer. So I significantly upped the fee for the plant for the next few months, and it responded really well by pushing out lots of new leaves, but it's not lost any since. If your small alocasia is losing leaves at a greater pace than the new leaves are sprouting, then you're probably not feeding your plant enough. Give your alocasia a feed every couple of weeks during the spring and summer, but make sure to follow the instructions on the packet for dosage. I use miracle Grow all-purpose liquid fertilizer and I make sure to follow the dosage for indoor plants, which is different to outdoor plants. Your alocasia will go dormant during the winter, so there's no need to continue feeding. And I'll come back to dormancy in a little bit. Alocasias hail from the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia, where they are covered by larger trees above them and they get dappled sun throughout the day. My advice with houseplants is always to try and mimic their natural environment as much as possible in our homes. For the best growth, pop your alocasia in a spot in your home that gets bright, indirect light. This would be approximately within two meters of the nearest window. I keep most of mine on my plant bench in front of my east facing window, so they do get about three hours of direct morning sun and they can handle this. I would avoid putting them in a spot that gets hours of direct afternoon sun because it would be too much for the plant and the leaves will scorch. Consistent excessive sun will lead to browning on the leaves and a gradual leaf drop. I keep my Amazonica in my west facing living room but I keep it on the side of the room where it only gets an hour of direct sun at the most right at the end of the day. Alocasias can handle darker spots in the home and this may actually suit you. Generally, the darker the leaves on a plant, the more they can handle lower light levels. The dark pigmentation in the leaves mean it doesn't need as much light as light colored plants. I'd also recommend that you keep the leaves clean to improve photosynthesis, especially if you keep it in a dark spot. If your plant is quite mucky, you can give it a shower to give it a spring clean and refresh the plant. This also keeps spider mites at bay. And I'll talk about spider mites in a bit. 
Alocasias prefer moist soil. I mentioned earlier that they're generally hungry plants, but I found them to be pretty thirsty too. My Amazonica was losing new leaves before they had fully formed, and I believe this was due to a lack of water as well as a lack of nutrients. Once I increased the watering so that the soil was consistently moist and actually put it on a fertilizer schedule, you had no problems pushing out new leaves. Don't keep the soil waterlogged, because this will eventually lead to root rot, and eventually the plant will lose leaves. The first symptom you will see if you are overwatering your plant is yellowing lower leaves, often accompanied by brown spots and some wilting on the stems. I always recommend checking the soil of your house plants before watering. This is especially important for alocasias. I often get comments on my videos asking me how much they should water their plant, and my reply is always to check the soil before. It's the simplest solution to getting the watering right. So stick your finger in a couple of inches into the soil shouldn't feel wet, but instead damp between the fingers. If the soil feels dry and crumbly, then you're not giving the plant enough water. If you've got a few spare bucks, then I highly recommend a moisture meter that will tell you exactly how moist the soil is. And I've got an Amazon link to the one I use in the description to this video. And I normally water when the meter reads moist going on dry. How often you need to water your alocasia will largely depend on your environment. If you live in Texas, then you're more likely going to have to water it more often than if you live in Scotland, for example, so make sure you always check before. As a rule, you should repot your alocasias infrequently. They really don't mind being somewhat root bound, and excessive repotting can lead to leaf drop. As a guide, try to repot your plant no sooner than every three years when the plant is clearly outgrown the pot it's in. If you have recently bought your plant and are unsure when to repot it, then you can pull out the root ball from its nursery pot and have a look, but I'd avoid disturbing the roots too much. Only repot if the plant is severely root bound with very little soil around the roots. Try not to disturb the roots too much when repotting either because alocasias are prone to root shock and you can end up losing a few leaves. I've started to not bother breaking up the root ball of my plants when I repot, and I am seeing some good results. I've got a video all about this that you should check out after this. To avoid root rot on your alocasia, keep it in a free draining potting soil. So I use two ingredients for my potting mix, bog standard compost from my local garden center and perlite for drainage. Like I said earlier, they don't mind being somewhat root bound in their pot and are more likely to get fussy with regular changes in soil than if you just leave it alone in the same soil for a couple of years. As long as you are fertilizing regularly, you should be fine. Avoid planting into just compost or just soil this is too dense for most plants and has a tendency to suffocate the roots and your alocasia will be no different. Alocasias are pretty sensitive to temperature fluctuations and this can be a particular problem in winter. If your plant goes between warm and cold every day, it's going to start to suffer and lose some lower leaves. Your priority here is to keep it away from radiators in the winter. The temperature and humidity fluctuations next to a radiator will do no favours for your plant. It might even start to struggle if you keep it on a windowsill, particularly at night, with the curtains closed. Doing this creates a cold microclimate caused by the cold air coming from the window being trapped by the curtain. I keep my smaller alocasias near my east facing window, but I don't have any curtains or blinds there, so there's no big temperature fluctuations between night and day and they seem pretty happy. Alocasias can be prone to spider mite infestations. This is probably the most common pest problem people will experience with this plant. If your alocasia has spider mites, you will notice yellowing leaves with a mottling pattern as the mites suck away at the sap of the leaves. Give your plant a close inspection and look for very fine webbing on the underside of the leaves particularly where the leaf meets the petiole. The spider mites don't lay this webbing to catch flies, but instead to move around the plant, and their food is the sap of the plant. Don't confuse this webbing with normal spider webbing that will travel greater distances from leaf to leaf and be far less concentrated. A nice tip is to shake your plant over a white sheet of paper and inspect for any tiny moving specks if you see something, then you've got a problem, you need to treat the plant. Give the plant a good spray down with water, wipe the leaves and treat with an insecticide to get rid of the mite colony. Once you've got rid of the problem, I'd isolate the plant from your other plants to reduce the risk of them coming back and spreading to the rest of your collection. I mentioned earlier that alocasias go dormant during the winter, and this is something that catch a lot of people out, especially when they see the plant lose a couple of leaves during the winter. This is a fairly common occurrence for this plant, 
and it's not normally something you can avoid unless you keep the plant under grow lights. The key thing here is to not panic. Cut back on all your watering and fertilizer, keep it in a bright spot, and let the plant do its thing. If your plant doesn't perk up by the time spring rolls around, then you might have an issue. Probably the biggest issue for plant parents is brown tips on leaves, and this problem is particularly prominent on calatheas. In this video here, I talk about why this happens and how you can avoid it. So click on the link so you don't miss out.